Um, so it's that time of year again where I teach my students the basal ganglia. And this is usually the time of year where there's a lot of trepidation and fear and confusion um, with regards to neuroanatomy. And it shouldn't be um, because the basal ganglia actually make a lot of sense when you simplify it and just look at it properly. So um, I think a reason for all of this fear and misunderstanding and confusion is that the basal ganglia are complicated. They are complicated in their spatial anatomy, um, you know, how they relate to one another in the deep white matter of the brain, and also the circuitry and the parallel loops. But um, I found that a lot of the confusion is around the direct and indirect pathway in the basal ganglia. So um, I wanted to find a nice little resource on YouTube that I can link my students to um, so that um, in their free time they can look at it and maybe enhance their understanding. But I couldn't find anything that uh, you know I, f I found um, sufficiently um, explains the direct and indirect pathway. So I thought, um, let me give it a go and see, you know, maybe you guys will find it useful. So um, I'm just going to simplify the direct and indirect pathway um, so that I can bring across the basic concept of those two um, circuits within the basal ganglia. So a short little video just simply explaining the direct and indirect pathway and their effects on the on the thalamus and therefore on the cortex. Um, it gets a lot more complicated. Um, we're just looking at some of the neurotransmitters um, and pathways and um, it gets a lot more complicated when you look at the other neurotransmitters such as dopamine which has both excitatory and inhibitory effects based on the receptor that um, it it um, binds to. So um, the pathways through the basal ganglia consists of multiple parallel circuits that say that share um, certain features. So the basic circuitry can be divided into a direct and an indirect pathway and these two pathways have opposing actions on targets of the basal ganglia. So as a general concept the direct pathway facilitates a flow of information through the thalamus and the indirect pathway inhibits this flow of information. So these pathways create a kind of an equilibrium or balance, if you will, in the inhibitory outflow of the basal ganglia um, and function by modulating the extent of this inhibition on target nuclei. If we look at the um, direct pathway over here, which is illustrated on the brain in this coronal section over here, we can see that it begins as an excitatory glutamatergic projection from the cerebral cortex to the striatal complex, so the caudate nucleus and the putamen in other words. These striatal neurons then inhibit cells in the internal segment of the globus pallidus and in the substantia nigra pars reticulata. These striato um, pallidal and striato negral fibers use GABA, so gamma aminobutyric acid, which is the major inhibitory neurotransmi neurotransmitter in the brain, um, as well as substance P. Um, and the cells in this internal segment of the globus pallidus. Um, and of the substantia nigra pars reticulata project to the thalamic neurons and these fibers have a high rate of spontaneous activity and thus tonically inhibit target thalamic neurons. So inhibition of these pallidal and negral projections by striatal cells decrease the inhibitory input 
to thalamocortical neurons. So the net effect of the direct pathway is to increase the activity of the thalamus and the consequent excitation of the cerebral cortex. So let's have a look at um, that in simpler terms on this little box drawing over here. So here we can see the direct pathway. We can see the cortex. Cortex giving um, excitatory glutamatergic projections to the striatum. The striatum uses GABA and substance P. So if the striatum is stimulated, it stimulates the secretion of GABA, which inhibits the globus pallidus internal segment and the substantia nigra pars reticulata. Because there is an inhibition of these output nuclei, it causes a consequent stimulation or disinhibition of the thalamus. So, because the globus pallidus internal segment and the substantia nigra pars reticulata is inhibited, there is decreased activity of this nucleus, decreased secretion of GABA, decreased inhibition of the thalamus, which then results in um, stimulation of the thalamocortical fibers. Now, if we look at the indirect pathway, it's a little bit more complicated. So the indirect pathway includes a loop through the globus pallidus and the subthalamic nucleus. So here we can see the indirect pathway. It's glutamatergic excitatory input from the cortex into the um, striatum. It then sends output to the um, external segment of the globus pallidus, then to the subthalamic nucleus, which then sends output to the internal segment of the globus pallidus, and finally sending its output to the thalamus. So um, these striatopallidal fibers that we can see over here from the striatum um, to the globus pallidus um, use GABA and enkephalin. So if we look at the um, simplified diagram over here, we once again have um, our glutamatergic excitatory um, input from the cortex on the striatum. This um, stimulates the striatum to secrete GABA and enkephalin, which then inhibits the globus pallidus external segment. Because the globus pallidus external segment is inhibited, it therefore has a decreased secretion of GABA acting on the subthalamic nucleus. And because the subthalamic nucleus is therefore not inhibited by GABA, it causes an increased excitation via glutamate of the internal segment of the globus pallidus and the substantia nigra pars reticulata. And because these two nuclei are stimulated, they secrete lots of GABA and therefore inhibit the thalamus, which then causes an inhibition of those um, thalamocortical projections. So therefore the net effect of the indirect pathway is inhibition, and the net effect of the direct pathway is disinhibition and therefore excitation. So the function of the direct pathway is to release the thalamus from its inhibition of the um, globus pallidus. Um, in the indirect pathway, the subthalamic nucleus is released from inhibition by the globus pallidus um, external segment, so that it can excite the inhibitory um, fibers from the internal segment of the globus pallidus acting on the thalamus. So between the thalamic disinhibition by the direct pathway and the subthalamic disinhibition by the indirect pathway results in normal basal ganglia nuclear function. So behavioral deficits that accompany basal ganglia 
nuclear just disorders can ultimately be traced to imbalances between the direct and indirect pathways. Okay everyone, so um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it makes sense. Um, once again, let's have a nice discussion in the comments. If there's anything you don't understand um, or suggestions, um, please do mention it. And then we'll see how this goes. Um, if this was helpful, maybe I'll do another one of these and we can build a um, small library of neuroanatomy resources.